Hey guys, it's Garth. How's it going? Welcome to this tutorial on Reaper. Today, all we're looking at is adding some media to a track in a Reaper project, and just a brief overview of the project hierarchy within Reaper. Okay, firstly, let's have a quick chat about key maps. Not an exciting subject, maybe, but let's quickly cover it. Most of the resources that you'll probably come across on the web and in other places are designed for Windows users. If you're using Reaper on the Mac, you're going to have to adjust a little bit. So if an action on Windows requires control as the modifier, on the Mac typically that will be command. If it's alt, then typically it'll be option. Other than that, shift is shift. You may come across the very rare action that requires Windows as the modifier. In that case, it will be mapped to Mac control. Okay, so control on Windows equals Mac command, alt equals option, and Windows equals control. Now, every now and then, you will come across an action that has been mapped slightly differently from the Windows to the Mac. You can't do a straight conversion. For example, there's one action that is mapped on Windows to Control Shift Q. Now, on the Mac, that translates to log out all users. That's a system action, is log out all users. So, one that has been changed slightly. During these tutorials, if we come across a situation where the Mac version of the Windows keystroke has had to be modified away from those basic rules of control equals command, etc. I will be sure and mention it. But of course, remember, you can always check with F12 and you can search for the action with F4 and establish exactly how it is mapped if you are running into any difficulties. Now, I've just opened Reaper. We've got a blank project. No tracks, There's nothing no actually saved. Um, so firstly, let's add a track. Command T to do that. One zero track name, edit text, blank. And it brings up a dialogue to actually name that track. So you don't need to name it if you don't want to, and I'm not going to in this instance, I'll just hit enter. Unsaved project, Reaper V5.40 slash 64, registered to go. Hit the control key. One thing with Reaper on the Mac, often when you come back to the main Reaper dialogue box, you get this whole big spiel read out to you. So the, the control key to silence voiceover comes in handy. So we've got at the moment, if I use the up and down arrow keys. One zero items. One zero items. One zero items. So we're on track one of one. And there's nothing on it. There's no items. So as I mentioned, we're going to quickly cover the project hierarchy. So firstly, your Reaper project is the, the top level. Now, when you're saving a Reaper project, and we'll get to this later on, you can designate that Reaper creates a folder on your, on your drive for an individual project. Now in that project, you'll have any media that you've brought into the project, plus you'll actually have the Reaper file itself. Now the Reaper file is basically just a document that tells Reaper what to do with the audio that you import into it or that you record with it. So Reaper is truly a non-destructive editor. The source media that you either add to a project or that you record into a project is never touched. And the actual Reaper project file itself is basically a playlist that tells Reaper what to do. So for example, if you cut the first three seconds off the audio, it basically it tells Reaper, okay, start playing this item three seconds in. It's as simple as that, guys. Anything that you do to the audio, any effects that you add to the audio, any volume changes, anything that you do does not affect that original audio. Now, you can have items on a project that you can glue together and Reaper will create a new media file so that is destructive. However, the original source audio is still maintained and is not touched. Okay, so your project is the highest level. Within a project, you can have as many tracks, and those tracks can be within folders if you wish for, for better track management. So you can create a folder and have, say, all your drums in the one folder and open and close that folder of tracks all completely accessibly. Within a track, you have items. Now, those items can contain MIDI information, they can contain audio, and sometimes video. Within items, you may have multiple takes. So let's say you are trying to you know, just get that guitar bit just right. You can run over the same item, taking take after take after take, and then later on, you can switch between those takes to see which one has worked out best. Okay, so in review, we have our project. Within the project, we have our tracks. Within tracks, we have items, and within items, we can have takes. One fantastic thing with Reaper when you're adding a track is that you don't need to decide what you want to do with that track before you add it. 
Now what I mean is when you add a track, it could be used for audio, you might use it for MIDI, it might be just used as a receive track where you instantiate some effects so that you can route audio from other tracks through it. It might be the cover of a folder, in which case it's kind of like a bus. Basically, you can add a track and you can do with it what you need to do. Now today we're going to keep it simple, all we're going to do is add some audio to a track, so let's get started. Once again, up and down arrows. One zero items moves you through tracks. We have at the moment only got the one track on this project and there's no items on it so you'll hear voiceover report one zero items. Now let's add a bit of media to this track. So I'm going to jump up into my menu bar. Menu bar Apple. Insert. And over to insert with I. Insert menu. Media file ellipsis command I. Media file and you can hear it say ellipsis command I. In my key map I've assigned command I to do this action. Now if you're on Windows the corresponding key, control I, is actually assigned to an SWS action that does not work on the Mac. So on Windows you can browse to a particular file through Windows Explorer, uh, copy it to the clipboard, come into Reaper and command I, well I should say control I, will paste that file onto the track. On the Mac that SWS action doesn't work, so that particular keyboard shortcut has been reassigned to adding a media file to the track, which is very similar. So let's just do that now, Command I. When you go through your menu or you hit Command I to add it, it brings up a normal finder window where you can browse to a file and find it. I'll um, just jump to my desktop because I put some files here. Example, folder. Blooper reel, no music, Sean.wav, wave document. We have Sean.wav, so this is a little bit of audio that uh, Sean Priest put together for me. Unsaved project, Reaper v5.40 slash. So now if I hit the up and down arrow. One Sean, one item. One Sean, one item. One Sean, one item. So up and down, as I said, moves between tracks. And just for example, let's uh, actually add another track. So I'm going to hit Command T again. Track name. Add unsaved project. And I'm not going to name it. Just hit Enter. One Sean, one item. Two zero items. So as I move between those two tracks, we have one Sean, one item. And two no items. So I'll just move back up to track one. One Sean, one item. Okay. Navigating and playing audio. So when you insert a piece of media in Reaper, the default behavior is that your insertion point is then placed at the end of that media. Uh, that is adjustable in preferences. Now, if I want to check where I am in the project, if I hit Command Shift J, bar one beat sixteen forty five percent. It tells me where I am in beats and bars. And if I hit Command Shift J J, bar zero minutes thirty point nine hundred fourteen seconds. Tells me the actual location that I am at. So currently we have our insertion point and our playhead at the end of that audio. I want to jump to the beginning of the project, so I'm going to use Command Home. Bar 1 beat 10%. And you can hear Reaper reports that information. And if I hit the space bar. Hello. And well. <coughs> Excuse me. I hit the space bar again. So the space bar is play stop, okay? So when you hit space, it starts playing. The playhead starts moving forward. And when you stop, your playhead returns to your insertion point, which is at the beginning, or wherever you left it. If instead of returning to the beginning, I want to pause at a particular spot, you can press Control Space. This will bring the insertion point, or actually the edit cursor, as it's known in Reaper, from where it was up to where you've paused. On Windows, the keyboard shortcut for Play Pause is also Control Space. So normally that would have translated to Command Space on the Mac, so this is the first one we've come across where that's been changed. So command has been changed to control for this action so that command space is still available on the Mac for Spotlight. Typically when an action has been moved off command, it has been to the control key. So let's try that now. I'll hit space just to start playback. Hello. And I've just hit control space and I've paused. So now I'm at that location. If I hit the space bar again, or control space for that matter, play pause, play stop, play pause. <laughs> and well, <coughs> and pause again. Excuse me. And pause again. Okay. So now I'm just going to hit command shift JJ again. Bar zero minutes, 4.249 seconds. And that's where we're up to in the project. Another thing I wanted to show you today is the Asara preferences. You can access these with Command Option Shift P on Windows Control Alt Shift P. Asara configuration window unchecked. Report position when scrubbing. Report position when scrubbing. So if you have that checkbox checked, when you scrub through your media, you'll get constant updates of exactly where you are in that media, 
which may be annoying, but depending on what you're actually doing, may be really helpful. Unchecked. Report effects when moving to tracks slash takes. Report effects when moving to tracks or takes. So for example, if you have an effect on a track and you move up and down between those tracks, do you want voiceover to read out all the particular effects that you have on that track as well? So that's another toggle. And the third one. Unchecked. Report transport state, play, record, etc. Report transport state and pretty self-explanatory. So we'll actually just tick that one for a moment. Check report transports. Normally I'd have that turned off, but let me just show you how it does work. We have it ticked. OK, default button. Press OK, unsafe. And quickly, they are the only three options that are currently in the Asara preferences. And I'm going to hit the space bar to start playing. Play. Hello, and welcome and to this guide to pause. Play. Reaper from guard. Stop. OK. Play. Reaper. Pause. You can hear voiceover will report play, stop, play, pause. And uh, that can be helpful. So let's quickly review what we've looked at today. We've created a track with command T. That'll give you the option to name the track as well. Guitar, voice, whatever you want to call it. We have added some media to it. Now that was through the menu insert and add media file, which I've assigned to command I. We've looked at how you can check where in the project you are with command shift J or command shift JJ. Remembering control spacebar for play pause and the spacebar by itself for play stop. Jump to the beginning of the project with command home or end of the project with command end. And had a quick look in the Asara configuration dialog with command option shift P. Once again guys, thanks so much for listening and bye for now.